Excuse me, America. Oh, yeah. I'm confused. You tell me to lighten up, but what you really mean is whiten up. You wish to wash me out, melt me in your cauldron. Excuse me if I tip your melting pot, spill the shades onto your streets. I don't want to lose my color. You wonder why I get so angry and don't trust me when I claim it's your fault. Hypocrites, we're gonna get inside so why? Hypocrites, are you will pay for your crimes? Hypocrites, we're gonna bleed you dry and your pockets will be empty but you won't know why. Huh? Hypocrites, yes we're going to get inside so why? Hypocrites, you will pay for your crimes. Hypocrites, we are going to bleed you dry. Your pockets will be empty but you won't know why. Uh, yeah. physicist who was, uh, was at Los Alamos in New Mexico and when the State Department had concerns about potential nuclear secrets being leaked to the Chinese, um, this, they went on a witch hunt and specifically looked at Chinese American engineers and physicists working in the labs there to figure out if any of them perhaps had, had been sort of the source of the leak and it's not even been proven there was a leak. But for some reason, Wen Ho Li was, was singled out, I think not coincidentally because he's Chinese, ended up being incarcerated you know, for months on end with no formal child, uh, charges ever really sticking to them. And, and finally, they ended up dropping you know, 95% of the charges they initially filed um, and having him plead guilty in one fairly, fairly minor charge as a way of, of, of uh, shedding all the negative publicity around his case. stands out within Asian American history. Uh, I mean, the, the, the very short story is that he was sort of this Chinese-American guy who is um, confused by these two unemployed white auto workers in Detroit as being Japanese. And at this time, this is happening around 1982, a lot of tension, a lot of um, anger uh, from American auto workers toward Japan because of, the, uh, because of economic problems that are existing in Detroit. And that Vincent was got into an altercation with these two guys at a bar, um, and they ended up beating him to death with a baseball bat. And sort of the, the popular understanding is because they thought he was Japanese and they were taking out their own frustrations economic, with their own economic situation uh, and sort of made Vincent into this, this scapegoat because they couldn't figure out, you know, what was he in terms of ethnicity-wise. Twenty years ago or so, Actually, less than that, you know, 15 years ago, South Asians were being beaten up in New Jersey for, for wearing bindis. Well, fine, the women wore bindis, the dot busters appears as a racist outfit, and they go and beat up mainly men. Okay, two people died, Kaushal Sharan and Navroz Modi, were killed as a result of this anti-Asian violence, for being dot heads. So what's ironic is that Madonna, when she wears the dot, in 1998, suddenly makes it chic. Um, a good friend of mine, she's South Indian, she grew up uh, in Connecticut. Her mom would make her wear her bindi and go to school. And she would get harassed so much uh, by kids saying, oh, your head's bleeding, there's a hole in your head, or oh, you know, I mean, you name it, right? Um, dot head or whatever they call, you know. She would be harassed so much that what she would do is she'd feel so ashamed to have that bindi on her head, that when she would leave her house, she would like wipe it off and then go to school and not have it and then come home and put it back on. I mean, to the point where a child would 
have to think about such a deliberate attempt to refute their own culture, um, I think is pretty profound. If there's a white girl wearing a bindi walking down Central Avenue in the Heights, she's not considered a dot hit, even though she has a dot on her head. Excuse me, America. You pushed for my paper permanency, shipped us as cargo for suburban missionaries, refugees aboard, handled with care. Please provide help for the godless children seeking refuge from a land fighting for your creed, a country in distress armed by your Congress, rampaged and pillaged, and suddenly my skin stretches on silver screens, the killing fields for your Hollywood hype. Capitalism is a voracious machine which eats cultural elements and makes of them commodities to sell back to us. What I once made with my hands, I have to now buy with a stamp which says Nike, you know, which says whatever it is, you know, boom music. Maybe we sang in our homes one day, now we have to buy, EMI will sell me back the songs I used to sing. Cultural commodification affects everybody in this condition of capitalism. Capitalism is probably the most powerful cultural force on the planet that's ever existed in, in, in mankind's history. And when, when powerful enough forces within cap, the capitalist market decide that this is what they want to sell, and this is sort of the things that they want to put out, I think it's very difficult, especially at the grassroots level, to rail against it. Because if you look at where media is centralized and who controls that, who controls where manufacturing is, um, you're not talking about a democratic process here. You're talking about you know, relatively a, an oligarchy of people who sort of make these decisions and, and follow these trends. Excuse me, America. I have tried to make this my home, but you never wanted me here. Nine digits to divvy up my newfound freedom, a hyphenated identity, misconstructed name, a divided soul, Asian, American, a hybrid woman, slash dash capped in lowercase in labels, contaminated by diction, pricked by vultures of bastard tongues. You mispronounce my pain, the sting heard on roll call days, daily friction, names, Slip of teachers' tongues sounding like slaughtered soldiers caught in battalion battlefields. Excuse me for getting so angry, but you can't even say my fucking name. Still, you shuffle my anger aside, want me to bite my lips and watch my words. Yet you caught me with your thoughts, your stories framed me in fiction, recreated for ideal themes, squeezed my mind for the minor myth that molds me into your major model, gave me seductive sex appeal to steal your virgin soul soldiers and drew me dragon claws to kill your unlucky sons. Excuse me if I get too angry. You spread lies meant to spread my legs. Excuse me if I have learned to master your language, sharpen my tongue, own my own words, and call my pain anger. I, I don't think the contradictions that exist with, within um, this question of, of cultural commodification as it applies to, to Asian Americans in particular is anything new. I mean, I, uh, an even bigger example that I think is if you look at the, the disparity and the contradictions between how black culture in America or within the world is sort of consumed uh, versus how black people are treated. And that's sort of, to me, a, a, a perfect example of how black culture sells like nothing else you can think of. But you look at incarceration rates, you look at sort of images of, of blacks, especially black men within the media, um, and you get, a very, you get a very different sort of picture in terms of structurally how people are set up where, again, it's, their culture is accepted and is consumed, but no one wants the people. So you might be able to bring in black, t you know, black TV shows, black music in your household, but you wouldn't want a black person living next door to you.